Hi everyone, it's Aisha Chidoe. I'm an immigration attorney here in Orlando, Florida. I represent clients all over the United States and internationally. Um, if you're interested in immigrating to the U.S., um, I will be happy to assist you regardless of what state you're in. My phone number here is 407-995-6567. I'm going to put that in the comment below as well. So today, um, I want to specifically focus on women that are in abusive relationships, right? You know, so I'm sure some of you guys have heard me talk about, you know, how you could self-position for yourself if you are suffering from marital abuse, right? In your relationship, if you have marital problems and it arises to the level of abuse. But a lot of times, you know, I, I mean, I do represent both women and men, but today I just want to focus on some typical kinds of abuse that women might experience that's not necessarily um, physical. Because, you know, most times when people hear abuse, you know, they imagine that they need to be have to, they need to be punched in the face or pushed or kicked. But sometimes there are other things that will arise to the level of abuse without any physical violence at all. So one of them is emotional abuse. So what do I mean by emotional abuse? Emotional abuse could be that you have a spouse who belittles you or embarrasses you or humiliates you in public, in front of their friends, in front of your own friends or your own family. It could also be, you know, that they prevent you, right, from visiting or seeing your sick relatives or your dying relatives. Or it could even be that they're jealous of having you be on the phone um, with them or having a relationship with them. It could be that they're calling you racist names or making fun of where you're from, making fun of your ability to speak English or lack thereof, um, or even telling your families lies about you or, or their own families lies about you. So those are some examples of like emotional abuse. <clears throat> um, excuse me, because I'm going to be looking down and reading from my notes just because there's a lot. <clears throat> And then you have economic abuse. Um, so economic abuse just means basically it's more, think of it more of, um, from the financial aspect. You know, sometimes, you know, you have men who want to control you. Um, and so they will make you um, not work or try to sabotage you or try not to file for you so you won't get your work permit because they feel like, you know, if you get your work permit and you start working, that you have a voice of your their own. And so as a way for them to control you, they will continue to um, sabotage your work, show up to your job, you know, send messages to your boss to fire you. And then you could have the opposite where you have a guy who basically doesn't want to work and he's like look you go work and you go bring in the money right and asks you for money for different things or whatever it is and even though they're working or they choose not to work anymore and sometimes you know they do it and feel like you know you owe them you know that this is a you know you owe them because after all you you you're, you're lucky because you married them a u.s citizen or them a green card holder um so you should be the one working hard for the relationship um, another example is sexual or intimacy, you know, um, abuse. So now if you have like, you know, a husband or a spouse that's basically, um, calling you a prostitute or like a mail order bride, you know, or they, 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 they accuse you of, um, sleeping around, knowing fully well that you're not sleeping around. I mean, a lot of times some men will actually be the ones in um, relationships with other people, but they will project that on their spouse and make it seem that, you know, um, their spouse is doing something that they're not supposed to be doing when they're the ones doing that, right? Um, another example is, you know, use of threats or coercion, and, you know, which is usually another one that's very terrifying. Um, to people, you know, some spouses will basically threaten you that they're going to have you deported, they're going to call ICE on you, they're going to call immigration and withdraw your petition, or they're not, they're just going to call them and tell them that I have somebody that's undocumented here and living here. Um, let's see, what else um, could they do? Or sometimes they even threaten you if you have kids, you know, and say, you know, your kids are not going to, um, that they're going to make sure that you don't have a relationship with your kids or that they're going to separate you from your kids, especially if you guys have kids together, you know, which is very terrifying for most um, mothers, right? Um, so that's one example. Um, and then another example is just general intimidation, right? So how they, how they act towards you when you get into like um, arguments. Um, because somebody doesn't have to physically hit you for you to feel um, fear that, you know, you're walking on eggshells or, well, what are they going to do, right? So you're going to be looking at things like, you know, how, you know, some people can just like, you know, s smash their phone, punch the wall and all those things. So even though they're not physically hitting you, those are things that are still scary and threatening, especially if you're a smaller person and the person is much bigger than you because you don't know if you would be next, right? 
or you know threatening to divulge family secrets to the public threatening to release photographs about you or porn images um about um with you and posting that so things like that that's you know the example for like threats and intimidation and then you also have um you know isolation where you know they isolate you from family and friends and how you can also frame that as control where they won't allow you to go to social events with your family and friends they won't allow you to be on calls with your family and your friends right or they want to be there while you're on those calls with your family and friends so they know what's happening right or if you don't speak english they won't allow you to go get um, um any kind of training to learn to speak english or anything that basically will put you in a good place to be independent of them. So of course, this is not an exclusive list. There's so much more um, to abuse, but I just wanted to give um, you guys some ideas of things that will rise to the level of abuse, even though it is not necessarily physical when you're dealing with um, you know, a case of marital abuse and you wanting to self-petition for your green card by yourself. Um, I work with um, a lot of individuals who are in the situation, so I would love to assist you if that is your situation, or at least, you know, get you in for a consult to see what your options are. You can definitely give me a call. My number is 407-995-6567, and I hope you have a wonderful day.